Come on now, people. I've been telling you for almost two years now, you need to have a GNR TV. And now sports are back. Football is back. Now is the perfect time for you to get this if you don't have it already. And if you look on over here, as I've been telling you before, you get all these amazing channels, every single one of them, for $20 a month for two devices. And if you look on up over here, it's written. It's written everything you get with GNR TV. If you want four devices, $40. And there's some cool extras right here. GNR TV, streaming done right. If you don't have it, get it. What more can I say? What more can I say? It's time to cut the damn cord, stop being ripped off by the dish and cable, and get this lovely thing we call GNR TV. Streaming done right. Let's get slicing and dicing with Sir Sturdy Horror fans. On this podcast, you will hear me and a guest do some movie reviews, random funny horror chats, and whatever else comes to mind. So tune in, kick back, relax, and always remember, I'll see you in your nightmares. Well, this Jason's mask. But how's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Here's another exciting episode of Horror Research 30. So I got my guys CW and Sean on here. How you guys doing? Good, man. Good. And yourself? Not too bad. Not too bad. I'm glad you guys are on here. CW, we've been going back and forth for the past few weeks, maybe even longer. I don't remember. Yep. We record with each other. I've actually, I actually had somebody, and I forgot who it was. I remember sending him a message. It was like December of 2018 about a record. Matter of fact, his name is Jed. Jed Bryan. Shout out to him, unsolicited owners. But I, sh- I remember sending him a message for us to record <laughs> December 2018. For whatever reason, we both agreed to it. And that was the last conversation we had until I got him on about a month ago. Now. <laughs> 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 Again, I was like, holy shit. We actually had a full on conversation. What the hell? Ha-? Like, I don't know. Neither one of us know what the hell happened. And, you know, so I'm glad it didn't happen with us. <laughs> Yeah, no, man. We, we try to make stuff happen as as fast as we can on, you know, mine and, and Sean's end when we're asked to do uh, shows, or even if we're talking to people, getting them on our own show. So we don't want to put stuff on the back burner too long. No, don't want it to get too stale or anything, right? Yeah. And thank you very much for asking us on tonight, man. Oh, of course. Awesome. Of course. I, anytime I see some horror fans on there, I can't even say especially podcasters. I only say that because I want, you know what I mean? If I'm on Facebook or whatever and I see you guys live, I'm like, let me check this out. And the mm-hmm. content's entertaining and funny. I'm like, hell yeah, I got to get these guys on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I was with Joe. Like, I seen her show just randomly. I was like, okay. I was like, well, she's an attractive female, which everybody knows, but then that that isn't enough for me to draw somebody as far as to be a fan of theirs or to want them on my show. Yeah, that's right. I mean, she's she has great content. She's funny. She's a great personality for what she does for her show. She's mm-hmm. awesome. So, hell yeah, I want to you know I want to work with her, and now we're cool as hell. I work with her as much as I can. Yeah, and I love that about the horror community. I love that about the other horror about horror podcasters in general. For the most part, it's like you want to get someone on hit them up. Hey, I'm busy this day, but let's try this day. And shit, it works out. It's fun. And it's funny, man. I, I love yeah. the entertaining part of it. Like I, I love being on this side of the camera as far as being the entertainer. My wife says I'm not funny, but there's a lot of people that watch my show that completely think the complete opposite. So, <laughs> so there you go. Well, I find that's usually it too. If, uh, if you're with somebody for that long, yep. they just, they're so used to your personality, they're just over it. <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> There's that. And women don't kill me. I don't think funny to an extent. Men, guys, we laugh at a lot of things. We're funnier. I have to. We're funnier. They may, they're prettier. We got to be. We we have to use something. We use our. <laughs> <laughs> Dig yeah. deep into the quiver of tricks, right? But yeah, yeah, Joe's show is uh, is amazing. As a matter of fact, it was um, uh, the guest that was on Ramblings of a Madman last week was Jay Saunders, and I uh, I found out about Jay through 
Joe's show. Uh, and yeah, I was watching the show and, and Jay was on and, you know, uh, they were speaking about his series Ithaca and I went and checked it out and it blew my mind. And I was like, yep, I got to get in touch with this guy and have him on the show. And sure enough, he was on last week. <laughs> Why do you say that? Because with Jay, I seen him on your show last week. And I was just like, <laughs> yeah, this is a very entertaining interview. And I, I love how not only with podcast creators, but with the creator of the short films or the fan films, or whatever you want to call them. I love how the what, how they have that energy. Like that's something else that like, gravitates me and drive you know, not drives me. I guess you could say drives me towards them or whatever, or draws me towards them. It's yeah, like, yeah. The of just like that person you have to have that personality. If you want to sell something or if you want people to watch your stuff, listen to your stuff, you have to have that personality. You can't just be sitting there like, Yeah, so I was <laughs> And um, it was a fun movie. Yeah, CW fucked everything up. He got drunk and knocked everything over. But, <laughs> <laughs> but even that's Seth, a bit too worried. worried. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it, but I know what you mean. If if especially if if you're asking them que- if you're asking someone questions and they're just monosyllabic in a way. Yeah. It's all like, oh, yeah. so uh, so you made this movie, and they're like, yep. Mm-hmm. And I'm like. Okay, uh, did you have fun? Yep. The funny <laughs> thing is, like, I, I understand we help each other out. Like, you're coming on my show to help promote your movie or whatever. I'm coming on your, and I'm having you on my show, not you know, to get your fans to watch this, but, you know, and also to help you promote it. But when you're not really promoting yourself, it's like, what's the, what's the point? <laughs> I could just. Yeah. I, <laughs> this is true. Yeah. It's really true. Yeah. You know, we had a good time with, uh, with Jay. He was extremely easy to talk to. Oh, yeah. Like, ridiculously easy. It was like we've known each other for 20, 25 years. It was, it was good. It was a solid interview. Uh, he wants to come back, and I'm hoping that we can get uh, Devin, his wife, on, uh, on an episode with us eventually. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Before we started recording, I was telling you guys how I feel about Nicolas Cage, which is a nice thing. <laughs> I was telling you how one of my friends is watching a movie. Every day, right now he's watching the movie Primal, and his his reason for watching these he said it's for the greater good. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, some people like to punish themselves, I guess. Yeah, I guess maybe it's so. He's like, I'll watch it. I'll he, maybe it's a taking one for the team type thing. <laughs> <laughs> for the greater good, I'll take one for the team and watch Primal. He doesn't have to do it. <laughs> you know, that's what he wants to do. <laughs> yeah, that's it. his life. Brady, he's not Herman, no one, man. Nah. He's Herman himself. That's he's, he's, he's watching it so you don't have to. <laughs> movies, though. That's enough for me. That's more than enough. But, you know, I digress. Yeah, that's it, man. What got you two together as far as with your show? Um, John? Yeah, uh, well, I was... Shit, I don't know. Well, <laughs> Carl me- messaged me and said, hey, I'm going to do a new show. If you want to get in on it? And I went, okay. And here we are. <laughs> it's literally, so, I know that's, I know we just finished talking about, yeah, like, what's the point to having people on who just <laughs> won't even promote That is you. legitimately like, the way it happened. <laughs> but that is how it happened. Like that, you need a new show? You want in? Yeah. All right. And then here we are. <laughs> well, I've been doing this stuff uh, about, what, two years longer than Sean. Yeah. I've done shows. I've done guest slots on other celebrities' shows, and uh, I've been on multiple podcasts, uh, working with Dan, Dan Yeager, uh, doing the Bad Anger Pictures stuff, uh, executive producer for his Bad Anger Pictures, and I helped him revive his coffee line, so we have Killer's Choice Coffee back up and running. Oh, nice. My wife would like and it. It's, it's good coffee, man. Head over to www.killerschoice.com. We have three different blends. So, And, uh, yeah, so I, I got sick and tired of the format of the way I was doing the original show, which was Carl's Creep Show. Mm-hmm. And from day one to now, if you've seen my interviews and my talking to celebrities, oh, my God, it's like night and day. Yeah. And I just I wanted to do something with – non-scripted no notes just let it flow have fun with it 
And I thought about it and like, who in the hell do I know that's foolish enough to want to come on board, do a show and just spitball the shit out of stuff. Insert Sean. Yeah. Cause I just, I, yeah, I just, I don't shut the fuck up like ever most times. Oh dude, when he gets oh, on, like he gets on a topic he can talk. <laughs> Look out. <laughs> yeah. And for us, especially if something's unscripted and uh, like we were talking about earlier too, like we also, we don't, there's no notes. We don't really plan questions. We, and every time uh, when the guests are in the, the quote unquote backstage area before we start recording live, it's just, we pretty much give them the rundown. Yeah, there's nothing planned. We're just going to, talk and see what happens <laughs> and they're like cool <laughs> yeah i i know we uh we try to usually log on we use Streamyard, and we'll have a chit chat and just see how everyone feels and like what kind of sense of humor out. yeah right just feel it out and because you don't want to offend no one no, and no. so far i mean the guest list that we've had we had to very very little censor ourselves. i'll just say it that way yeah. I mean, we've had Billy Pawn on a couple of times, and if anyone out there like is familiar with Billy, be prepared for dick and fart jokes. Yeah. they're going to happen, right? That like you know, the <laughs> what? This that is picture of Billy on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. No, he's he's a, he's an awesome cat, man, and uh, he was nice enough to come back uh, on our second episode. Our first episode was him and Bill and Parrish Randall. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we had Billy come back with uh, Serge Gracida and Bill Oberst Jr. Yeah. And uh, I told him I'd like to get him back for another episode and probably bring in the rest of the clowns. Nice. Yeah, it would be great. So that'd be nice. It'd be interesting, actually. A couple of the guys that I haven't even had a real chance to talk to that I'd like to talk to. So it's, it's fun. It's fun being the host of a show <clears> where. I mean, versus radio where you have to be censored. Like, we do not have to censor ourselves at all. We do it for our guests for the most part. That's right. And, like, when my brother, my brother's like one of my co hosts. When he does come on here, oh my God. You think there's like two 12 year olds just talking about all the crazy. <laughs> right. All these conversations come up. And these are sober conversations a lot of times. Like, yeah. we'll, like if we're now, if we're gaming, like, we'll play, a, like, we'll play a <laughs> World War Z or Zombie Army 4 or whatever on the PS. Yeah. And I'll be twitching. And getting high, and just that's when the conversations are just nonsense. Like I still remember. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh my god, I was high as shit listening to Old Town Road. I'm sure you guys heard it. Yeah. yeah. And out of nowhere, I don't know why I said this while I was high, but uh, I was talking about riding a horse to my father's house. And mind you, that's like a 25 minute drive. I don't know how long that is on a horse. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yo, do horses and deer get along? And he was like, I don't know why. And I said, because, like, the way I go, like, if you go around this back road through, like, you know, like a, a back road, you, there's deer that come out. So in my mind, I'm like, would they just start fighting? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That sounds like some good weed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but what, what makes it funnier, though, right, it's because one of my friends listened to it. I don't know if he listened to it live or not, but I know he, looked, he was asking me about it. He might listen to it the next day. Cause he was asking about it Monday at work. He was like, "What the fuck were you two talking about?" <laughs> I was like, "Yo, I have no idea." <laughs> I'm sure you guys have had these either recording together or just having conversations together where you're laughing so hard. Like I had to take my headset off because I was laughing so hard it just stopped. Like I, my stomach was tears in my eyes, and I put my headset on. I'd hear him laughing, and I'd take my headset right back off. It just it took me about five ten minutes to get myself together. <laughs> to get that usually that happened. happened yeah, with us, with CW and I, whenever, usually whenever we're filming. Oh, that's and it's like, w as soon as we're done filming, that's it. It's uh, just Miller time. And yeah, then right. we can almost, we almost end up pissing ourselves laughing yeah. more than once. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man. It, I, I love those type of things, though. And that's another thing I love about doing this is because you find others out there because you're just like, is it just us crazy? Is it just our dumbasses? Like, no, there's other dumbass guy friends that do the same exact shit we do. We do. They just look yeah. at the world. And okay. now, what, we, what we started doing now is, uh, we actually started about two weeks ago, while we Twitch is just 
during the week we'll find like a cheesy, shitty horror movie, and we won't show it or listen to it on Twitch, but we'll review it as we're gaming high. So, <laughs> oh wow, <laughs> that sounds like a great show. <laughs> Actually, that's a great concept for a show. We'll freaking fun. And what we're gonna do is, well, I ha- I only downloaded one episode of it so far. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put those right on the YouTube and actually I'm going to give you guys, tell you guys about this. I was telling you guys how I started a network. It's called the Z network and it's yeah. a Z network exclusive. So you have to go to that YouTube channel, get the Z network exclusive for that. It's going to be a horror yeah. story thing, but it's just going to, you know, just something so you can go to that to get to that network, to get the network some more play on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. It's nice. Oh my God. It's so fun. We, we yeah, should do like, a, we should do a uh, three way Twitch stream. Baked of Vermont. I'm in. Doing a uh, marathon of evil bong movies. I'm in. <laughs> yeah, I'm down with that. It's funny you mentioned that because me and my other co host were watching those movies. I think I was high for one of the reviews. I don't remember. But those movies are so funny and ridiculous at the same time. Just... But you like you enjoy them because that's what I, that's one thing I do love about like the shitty horror movies that know that they're shitty. It's yeah, so enjoyable versus the ones that suck, but they think they're good. Those, yeah, are- yeah. Watch, I'm like, what the fuck? Blood Lake's a great example. I don't know if you guys ever seen Blood Lake from 1987. Yep. No, I don't. Worst horror movie. If I did, I don't remember it. <laughs> Evil Bong is so bad, it's good. Yes, I haven't seen. I haven't seen any of the Evil Bongs yet. Oh my god! I know, right? But they're. Uh, they're free on Tubi, even. On Tubi, man. You start yeah. with part one and work your way up. It will have you into fits laughing. Yes. Yeah. Now, going back to this Twitch thing, because I think this is an excellent idea. How do we do this? Because like, I don't... Would you, like, through StreamYard Twitch? Or... I'd have to talk to you behind the scenes a little bit on, on Twitch, on how that works, because I haven't used Twitch yet. Okay. Sure. I, I know. Out. Like I know you can stream with it via because I know Joe does it like via Streamyard. She'll be on Twitch and Facebook and all that. Yeah, yeah. I don't have Streamyard, but that would be fun. That I got Streamyard. Me and Sean have it. I'm in. Right. So yeah, and that's the thing. You and you don't need Streamyard either. Like you wouldn't need it yes. if uh, if we just sent you the invite, right? And then that way we can all go from there. Yeah. Hell, I'm yeah in for that. I. That's- that just let's, let's make a plan. Let's make a plan. So I, I would have to. Whew, okay, so running it through StreamYard, I would have to have the full movie file uploaded to be able to play. But how would it stream over Twitch? Because I'm not sure. Because I don't. I don't know if you'd get in trouble for copyright stuff. I don't know how it works via Twitch. But I mean, even if we just watched it and then reviewed it after, you know what I mean? Just yeah. reviewed it high as hell after. I'd do that too. Yeah, we could do that. We could. Yeah, we could do like uh, start with uh, part one, obviously, and you'd want to work your way through them. Yeah, it well, could be. It could be like the Evil Bong Stone series review. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll just sit down and eat a bag of gummies. Yeah. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's something, man. We got to talk a little bit more about and figure figure out how it'd be cool if we could figure out how to do a watch party so people could log on and watch along, but also listen to the three of us ramble about pure nonsense during the film. I was mm-hmm. into it as far as like you know the whole copyright crap with that. If it's a op- if it's an open source type of thing, I think you'll be I think you'll be fine. So just. Mm-hmm. Look into that more, but I'm definitely down to do something like that. Well, Twitch is yeah. not Twitch. Uh, Tubi, Tubi has it there for free. So, yeah, but but Tubi, I think Tubi would have uh, like right. the right to play it too, right? Because yeah, they're they're releasing content for free, but they're actually being paid through advertisements. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, and that's true enough. So yeah, it's something that we'd have to look into, but I'm sure. We can hammer it out and figure something out. We could probably do a Facebook uh, a Facebook watch party for it. Mm. See, with Facebook watch parties, though, you can't. It won't be like like we would be on video. We'd just be in the comments. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like we we would have to 
make the event as a watch party so everyone could watch it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, like, I mean, I'm talking like our our fan base and your fan base mm-hmm. could watch. And then we could pop on and do like a three way. I don't know, make it like a, a Twitch exclusive type oh, review. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm either way. I'm down. I'm in. You had me yeah, in. Yeah. I didn't watch a movie. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, you know, and, and Sean has yet to see either one. And oh my god, I don't know how exactly. that's possible. So you- but- You've had me at Evil Bong, though. <laughs> I remember seeing. I remember seeing the titles and laughing, and going, "I gotta check these out." <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty funny. That's see, that's, that's another thing I love about the horror community and just horror movies in general is that movie right there. To most people, be like, "I'm not watching that." that that's for, my wife wouldn't watch that. That's, that'd be stupid. That's ridiculous. She loves horror, but she doesn't like comedy horror. Yeah, yeah. For me, I thanks killing is still my favorite horror comedy to this day. I don't nice. know what it is about that movie that I love so much and I find it funny every single time I watch it. But I just it's just a weird attraction. And I could watch it for free on Tubi but I, but I bought it on DVD. Part one and nice. part part three. You get it's a hitter man. It's not so much. I watched that one time I haven't watched it again. But yeah. part one oh my God. I haven't seen part two or three. Part one of Thanks Killing had me in the fits laughing. Yes. Yeah. 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 There is no part two. So part three, they are searching for part two. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Yeah. It even <laughs> it even says so. It even says that in like the synopsis. <laughs> so there actually is no part two, but in part three, they released they're a searching. part three looking for part two. They're searching for part two, yeah. That's fucking genius. It's it's, it's have- out there. <laughs> The best opener, nice tits, bitch. That is the first line of the third movie as well. I, that's the only spoiler. I'll give you. But I wasn't the third one. I wasn't as big on. It was okay. The first one, though, I can't even tell you how many times I watched that. As a matter of fact, <laughs> I remember, well, I don't know if it was last year or the, or the year before. I was watching it so I can get ready to record it with my friend. Yeah, and my wife was in the living room with me for two minutes, if that. She was like, "I can't watch this shit." Left the room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like um have you seen troll 2 yes <laughs> i didn't finish it though because i i got the part where the kid was peeing on a table and then yeah. my reaction was i would not if i would have done that as a child i would not be sitting here having this conversation with you two gentlemen right now <laughs> no <laughs> no <laughs> there's some there's some funny scenes in that one, that it's just so bad. Like, yeah. That's a movie that's just so bad, it's good. I'm gonna have to go back and watch that one again, just because it's. But I, I love movie. I I love slash hate movies like that. I mean, the ones that know they're bad. Another one I can yeah. tell you guys is uh, what is it called? Tree Venge. It's like a 15 minute short. On you can watch it on YouTube. Okay. Killer Christmas trees. Hilarious. Nice. I'll have to check that out. Horrible. I do. I'd watch that. And it's only, like I said, it's only like 15 minutes, but it's one of those movies to where, I mean, like everybody in the movie knows that it, we're not taking this serious. We're just having a good time with it. And I love, I don't mind watching quote unquote bad movies when it's like that versus watching a movie where it's like, oh, shit. like I, again, going back to Blood Lake, because that's like the worst movie I've seen. I fucking hate it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Blood Lake, that's such an awesome title. That gets you hyped, gets you excited. And you put, yeah. what the fuck is, what the hell? Like within the first five minutes, I, Really quick story with this one. So there's Blood Lake, the slash, and then there's Blood Lake, I guess it's called Attack of the Lampreys or whatever, but it doesn't say this on the title. So I'm watching, me and my friend, my co-host James, were doing a podcast for these two movies, for these, for Blood Lake. So I'm like, all right, let's watch Blood Lake. I watched the water one. He watched the slash one. <laughs> <laughs> when I and you're both like, what the fuck? <laughs> when you're both comparing, no, not even. <laughs> talking about it, it's like, what? I didn't even get that far, right? Like, I'm watching the movie, and I posted it in the group, and he texted me. He's like, yo, you're watching the wrong movie. I was like, what do you mean? I'm watching Blood Lake. And he sent me the cover. I was like, yo, I was like, you know what? I was like, let's just watch both of them. Because I think we were recording that night. And he rec- he had watched the movie the day before. He was, I was like, yo, let's just watch both of them. Just review both of them. He's like, all right, fine, fuck it. That was the worst fucking three hours of my life. <laughs> <laughs> worst to watch the three Nick Cage movies back to back? I didn't do that. Yet. I, see, I, I would never. Not yet. 
through that kind of passion, through that kind of pain, and because I'd probably have to go in an asylum after that. That's why I said I'm doing it. Well. <laughs> and like, the funny thing was, right? Because I I watched the water one first, and I was, and then I watched the slash one the next day. Within the first five minutes of the slash one, I was like, "Yo, this movie! I can't fucking believe I'm watching this bullshit." My boy was like. <laughs> I wanted to tell you, but I didn't want to. I don't want to ruin it for the show. He's like, "Yeah, I'll tell you. It sucks, but I'm not gonna tell you why." So we ended up reviewing both those movies, and oh my god, because of Blood Lake with my movie rating now, it goes for, instead of from a one to a ten, it goes from a negative ten to a positive ten because that's how bad okay. it was. Oh wow! Like, it was, so you oh. can actually you can actually review movies and give them negative points. Oh yeah! Oh hell yeah! <laughs> I, I, I'll give you credit for making the movie. I will always get yeah. that, but I'm gonna be honest. I can't sit here and lie. Like, oh well, you made the movie, you did this, you did. I mean, look, the movie sucked. You know, no, I, right. I I can't draw, so I don't draw. If you see me draw, you're like, hey, what the? F- what is this? It's a car. <laughs> Are you sure? It sucked. <laughs> <laughs> drunk? No, I said it wasn't. <laughs> and it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be a low budget film to suck. I mean, oh. as much as I fucking love the Friday the Thirteenth. Franchise Jason X was fucking terrible. Yeah, it was, it was, it was a rough one. It was a rough one. Oh yeah. And, well, anytime just, Jason goes to outer space and starts yeah. looking like something out of Star Trek, I don't know, man. I and I was, I was even. I remember when that movie first came out, <coughs> I couldn't stop complaining about it, and I was like, man, anything could have been better, a better concept than Jason in space. Mm-hmm. Like anything, it's like. Here's an idea. Jason is a ghost that haunts Camp Crystal Lake. That is even a better idea than, yeah, let's put him in space then. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> we should do a fan film and get Andre. Yeah, there you go. Andre's the guy that cosplays as uh, a professional quality Jason at my horror con every year. Yeah. Big guy. Big guy. <laughs> Um, can you tell more about it? Because I heard you like briefly discussing it with Joe. I don't remember when it was. I don't know if it was last week or the week before. I get my days. Yeah, back. yeah. Uh, the horror con. Um, all right. So back in 2017, I started brainstorming an idea for Newfoundland. Uh, we've got conventions here. We've we've got four other than mine. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just woke up one day and I started looking at some family and friends. I'm like, yeah, but I'm going to put pen to paper and create a Newfoundland horror convention. And right out of the gate, everyone's like, yeah, it's not going to work. You're going to pigeonhole yourself. There's not that big of a market for Newfoundland for it. And I just refused to believe I was the only person here in our province that liked horror films. No, oh, yeah. You know, Far from it. and I pulled off horror one. And that's where I met Sean. And uh, multiple, multiple other people here in our province. And most of the people at the event all said the same thing at the end of it. They're like, man, we did not know this family of horror existed in Newfoundland until you got us all together here. Yeah, well, and, me, it was just, I thought it was just me and my friends. And that's basically it is what it seemed like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then here I am getting other guests in doing their panels. And I mean, like mutual friends of ours, grind mind, they're gone on now doing stuff with, uh, uh, trauma. They've they got yeah. some of their stuff on trauma and they're, you know, they're cranking it out. And then, uh, yeah, they're doing a friend, yeah, they are they are. And then a friend of mine, Charles Pico came in, in the second year. And Charles was a uh, writer and co-creator of Todd and the book of pure evil which was a show done in Canada, but it had global distribution. We'll say it that way. Yeah. And uh, if you haven't seen it, check it out, man. Uh, Jay Muse is in it. Jay Muse uh, from Jay and Saw Bob. Yeah, definitely send me a link and I'll check that out. That's, that's yeah. part of the con though, man. That's Congratulations on it. That's, that's really fucking cool. Yeah, and, and at the end of it, so Mike Hickey, Mike was the MC, and... Um, for part two, for Horicon two, he was the MC. For Horicon one, he was a guest of mine. He runs a show on Crypt TV, uh, which is owned by Eli Roth, mm-hmm. called Fright Hype, and Fright Hype is the longest running show on Crypt TV. 
So I was like, fuck yeah, man. I got to reach out to Mike Hickey and get Mike on board. And when he said, yeah, sure, but it's going to be late before I can get to the event because that was day two of the event. And he's like, I'm flying back into Newfoundland like after dinner. Mm -hmm. And he's like, the event starts, your event starts at two. I need to get a couple hours rest and I'll be out. So I'm like, sure. And then I didn't realize where the hell he was too until he got back to the event. He's like, yeah, so I just red eyed from LA and I did. Yeah. He's like, I did the black carpet premiere for the Halloween film back in 2018. And he interviewed Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah. So he's like, he done, had done his panel and talked to the crowd and everything. And next thing you know, he's doing his video file, showing us all the videos of him talking to like Jamie Lee Curtis and like all the other actors. And, it was it was awesome. So when it was all said and done, anyway, he's like, "So I got a little surprise for Mister Penny." I'm like, "What the fuck, man? What'd you do? Kidnap Jamie Lee Curtis? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, fingers <laughs> like, crossed, no. right? right? Fingers <laughs> crossed." But he apparently, I don't know how, but Mike found out I was a Hellraiser guy, and through the jigs and reels, he knew Nick Vince, and I'm, I'm like. I didn't know what the hell he was getting towards. He's like, yeah, so you're going to like what I got to show you anyway. So he presses play on this video file and up pops Nick's face. And he's there, sat down in his office. And Nick's like, hi, Carl, my name is Nick Vince. And at that point, before the man even spoke, I'm like, (laughs) fuck, man, I didn't need Nick Vince to tell me who he was, right? Yeah, and he's there, and he gives a shout out to Horicon and all this, and I'm I'm floored. I literally ran over in front of everyone, hugged and kissed Mike. <laughs> I'm like I'm like fuck, dude. Like I just met you, and you just did this for me. Come here, I tickles the flipper, right? You know, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> you know. So anyway, <laughs> later, <laughs> Sean's like, <laughing. laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, later that night, after everything was done, the event was over. It must have been about 2, probably 2 a.m., 2, 2.30 a.m. my time, our time. And anyway, I got this friend request on Facebook from Nick Vince. And I'm like, yeah, there's no fucking way possible this is his real account, right? <clears throat> me being me, I accept it. Never messaged nor nothing. I was just expecting some random fan page or, you know, whatever. And anywho, about three hours later after that, <laughs> so it was around five o'clock in the morning, my dawn, my messenger started ringing. And I'm like, who in the hell is calling me at this hour? Right. So I reach over and I don't even acknowledge who it is popping up on the screen. I just hit accept. And I hear this English voice. I'm like, oh, shit. (laughs) So, right, I got talking to Nick. And um, anyway, I I perked up pretty quick. We'll just say it that way. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he's like, yeah, so um, congratulations on doing something that was never done in your province. And he's like, so when are we going to do an interview? I'm like, dude, I don't do interviews. I don't have a show. And he's like, well, you're going to start one now. (laughs) And that's exactly like, it. Yep. Yes, I'm, I am. Like, I'm like, yes, yes, I am. Because apparently Chatterer is telling me so. <laughs> yeah. And that went down, man. It just escalated from there. And from there, I met uh, Simon, and he played Butterball. I met Gray, uh, Barbie, who played the female Cenobite. Mm-hmm. Uh, I reached out to Grace, but Grace doesn't do a whole lot of social media. I mean, she, she was the female Cenobite in part one. Uh, mm-hmm. And if people don't know, that's Clive Barker's niece, I think it is. Oh, and wow. I did. didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't know that until Nick told me. And Nick's oh, like, wow. so Cl- Grace pretty much did that part for Clive as a favor. Oh. And yeah, right. So she didn't really, she wasn't like an actual actress, actress. Mm-hmm. And uh, then Barbie came in in part two and replaced her, you, you know, her character and all that good stuff. And yeah, as the Hellraiser movies went on, Clive stepped back further from, you know, each one until he gave it all up. And now he's in a battle trying to, uh, I'm pretty sure he actually almost has them secured back, but he's, he's looking to get the rights for the Hellraiser franchise back. Mm -hmm. 
So, yeah, that's how it all started on my end, man. And uh-huh. spun out of control working with uh, people like Dan. And I've been on, I used to do a regular spot once a month on LC Holt's uh, show. We used to discuss uh, real life serial killers mm-hmm. once a month. And uh, he'd be on my show and, you know, vice versa and all that stuff. It's good stuff, yeah. man. That's fucking awesome. That's fucking awesome. So I pulled Sean into the, the craziness of our world. Yeah, and it's kind of, yeah, there's still a lot of shit that, I don't know. I think, it. well, it's still, some stuff is still a bit surreal in a way, but not. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh Waking up one morning and having messages from John Dugan on your phone. And it's like, oh, hey, John, what's happening? But then when you actually stop and think about it, it's like, fuck, man. I grew up watching Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Grew like, up watching like, Grandpa was, Sawyer. And it's like, and it, but it's Grandpa Sawyer messaging me. But it's like, it's not Grandpa Sawyer, it's, but, it's, but it's John, right? Yeah. It's weird. It's fucking it's crazy. Oh. But, you know, and then you stop and go, what? That's like, um, like last week I posted something on Facebook and Brad Keston commented on it because Brad and I are friends now. We don't talk a whole lot on Facebook, but you know, he commented on my shit and it's like, you kind of stop for a second and you're like, dude, that's, that's Charlie Brown. He did the voice for Charlie (laughs) fucking Brown. fucking Charlie Brown, man. It's weird. It's strange, but it's like, I mean, you know, and it's weird because I don't think about it. It's like, oh, hey, Brad, what's happening? Or like, hey, John, you know, we'll shoot the shit. But then it's almost like that. Uh, it's almost like the kid in me will stop and think about, you know. Yeah. Yep. Growing up, like watching all that shit. And now I kind of know these people. Fuck yeah. I, I, I told you to strap in, man, because uh, the ride gets a little uh, insane. I mean, never did yeah. I ever think that I'd be able to message or, or, you know, text half of these people. I mean, God damn, to be able to say you're friends with George Romero? Come on. That's yeah. all. Yeah, like, come on, right? <laughs> you know, I, got to, I got my first taste of it in 2003. I worked at, uh, I had a work term at Ardmore Studios in Ireland. And uh, I worked on, actually worked on the movie L.A. Enchanted. So there was like a couple of celebs kicking around there that I got to say hello to and hang out with and have a few pints with. It was that was pretty fun as well. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think as fans, I feel like we for sometimes forget that celebrities are people too. Mm. Yeah, it's like for example, last last October, which seems like it was fucking four years ago, but I went to a yeah. con, a Scaracon. And it was the first. It wasn't the first time I went to a con, but it was the first time we did. We actually did a VIP. See how that was. And honestly, we just did it for the VIP party. Like I don't care about getting in lines. <clears throat> I bring my podcast on so media, so I'm like I get in lines be- way before VIP because I have to get in here to set up anyway. So it's like shit, right in line. But no, yeah. we did it for the because they had a VIP party that Friday night, and it was open bar for two hours. And that was so much fucking fun, man. And I can f- imagine. So we, I live in upstate New York. I live in Albany, New York. Well, it's connected to New York, technically. Yeah. I traveled to Rochester, New York, which is about three and a half, three, three and a half hours away. It was me and my wife. Yeah. And that whole time, I didn't eat anything, right? I didn't eat cool. anything, just drink water. The first thing I ate was at the VIP party, and it was candy and cookies. <laughs> <laughs> And then lots of free booze. <laughs> That's what I was getting. I was beer. I had like a couple shots because they wouldn't give us like shot, like regular shots. They had poured it in like one of these little plastic cups with ice because they want people yeah. to handle. So I took a few of those with my wife and she went downstairs to you, or she went up to the room to like, relax and let me and my brother hang out because he flew out from Colorado mm-hmm. and, you know, she was tired or whatever. So <laughs> I didn't realize how drunk we were till we got to the. Well, two things. One, till we got to the room, and then two, the next day when we were looking at the pictures we took. <laughs> <laughs> there was a part where um, it was, we go, so we go, we went back to our room. My, me and my brother were talking. I think I went to the bathroom to a quick shower and change, or whatever. And we were talking, and we heard a knock at the door, and my brother looked out the peephole, and it was Jason Lively. And he was just running up and down the halls, knocking on people's doors, drunk. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I was 
I was drunk and I thought my wife was asleep. And I was like, yo, I was like, should we go out there and see, you know, just have some fun or just stay in here? I was like, he was like, I don't know. What do you want to do? I was like, I'm not sure. I was like, I don't have a shirt on. So <laughs> I, was like, I guess we'll do <laughs> But the the thing was, we didn't want to leave because I didn't know how my wife would take it. We just left the room, like just leaving her in the room. Mm-hmm. If she would have been mad or whatever. So I just didn't take that risk because then you ruin your whole weekend. So the next day, she's like, I listened. To, she's like, I heard you two fools talking drunk. She's like, you should have just went out there and had fun. I would have been fine. I was like, well, I thought you were asleep. She's like, no, I heard. I was like, well, why didn't you say something? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. It's funny that it's funny that you say that though. How um, you were saying that uh, as fans, sometimes you forget that actors are people too. The they, story that I was, the story that I was getting on with though, it, it's kind of the opposite for me. I kind of forget that these people are actors <laughs> that I'm talking to. Do you know what I mean? It's like you know, just messaging and chatting with these people, especially the people that I'm meeting on Ramblings of a Madman, and it's just kind of talking and shooting shit with them and. It's like, oh yeah, you were in one of my favorite fucking horror movies of all time. Yes, growing up, right? Fuck, I keep forgetting that. You know, I'm even. Yeah, like, but we, oh, go ahead. Sorry, I'm even like that with the indie films. Like now, um, where I have people reaching out to me to want to check out their films and stuff, or just reaching out, just come on the show, just because they heard of it from someone else. And I'm just. Yeah. The fuck? Like, how the hell did you hear about me? <laughs> really? <laughs> That's awesome, though, man. It, it's so I... it's so humbling and rewarding at the same time. <clears throat> I started this show just with me, friends, and family just shooting the shit, talking horror, and I went from that to making. I mean, I had a Facebook group and page or Facebook group, and I would do like unboxings on there. So it started out as that, and I kept saying I'm gonna start a podcast. My wife got me a a podcast like thing. She got me a um. A mixer. It came with a mixer, a microphone, a mic stand, and a pair of headphones. And that's this was almost three years ago. And actually, it was about a little more than three years ago when she got me the equipment. About three. Was years that ago. a Scarlet kit? It was. Um, no, I forgot what what the kit was. It was in a yellow box. I still have that kit. So I still okay. have part of it. But the headphones went after a while. I got a. I ended up getting a bigger mixer. But it was like a hundred bucks. And the funny thing was, is like she sent okay, so I'm at work, working my ass off, of course. She sends me a picture. Look what just came in the mail. Didn't tell me she ordered this podcast. And I'm just like, I'm like, Aaron, okay, so you have two options. You can either pretend you're sick and go home and start playing with this stuff now, or you can <laughs> I chose to be an adult. It probably wasn't a Friday, so that's probably why I chose to be an adult. <laughs> right. But like ever since then, I was just I've been hooked and like I've I've always been a fan of podcasts, listening to them. And yeah. I, eventually I just wanted to start a horror one because I haven't heard of too many horror when I started when I'm I know that there was one that I just didn't hear of them because they weren't popular at the time. Yeah, yeah. And when I started listening, I'm like, holy shit. I was like, I could do this. I was like, me and my it's just a bunch of friends talking about fucking movies. I could eat we do this all the time, drunk, high, sober, not recording anything. We might as well record it because it's funny. And there's times yeah. right. There's also times where I'm sure you guys have these moments where you want to remember the conversation, but obviously you don't. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, because again, it's nothing is nothing is scripted or there's no notes. It's just kind of go, yes. press record and go. <clears throat> we were going to have some um, virtual panels because we couldn't fly no one in for, for Horicon this year. Mm-hmm. And I ended up postponing the event until 2021 <laughs> because our COVID numbers started to go back up and all the other conventions postponed. And so I followed suit. Yeah. Um, but anyway, this Saturday, um, if you want to tune in, I guess I'll be streaming it from the Horicon page, an El Horicon page, but uh, Mike Hickey, uh, and Matthew Ladru and myself will be doing a little uh, chit chat about writing in film with DJ McHale. And DJ was one of the writers on "Are You Afraid of Dark?" the TV series. Oh, cool. oh my gosh, that brings yeah. us- oh my goodness, that brings us such. Yeah. Good- I would I would love to rewatch that series and like review it. It's going to be nostalgic for me because I grew up on that and Goosebumps and 
this, that, and everything else, right? I mean, oh, dude. So, currently going through separation and all that good stuff. But Sorry, anyway, the the mom of, of my two kids, uh, she's a good person and all that. But a, a while back, we were watching um, Goosebumps. It was the one with Jack Black acting as uh, R.L. R.L. Stein. Okay. I can't remember the, the actual title on it. So anyway, I went to bed, woke up the next morning. I looked at her and I said, I'm going to... I'm going to message R.L. Stein. And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, I'm going to message R.L. Stein. I don't know how. I'm going to track him down and I'm going to do it. <laughs> so anyway, I found a verified Facebook account, sent him a message. And as fast as I had sent, forgot about it. Mm-hmm. And seconds after I had my phone laid down to go walk away to grab a drink, ding. <laughs> I picks up my phone and holy fuck. It's oh, R.L. Stein. <laughs> I was not prepared, did not expect it. I was like, oh, shit, don't have a clue what to be saying right now. Oh, right? Man. So I'm like, hey, R.L., how are you doing? Uh, you know, and all these crazy times, hope you're staying safe. I, I played it like the smart safe card, right? And he's like, yeah, all's well. You know, I'm just working on, uh, you know, Slappy's World, uh, all the new books and stuff like that. And. Then I reached out to him. I said, hey, man, I'd love to get you to my event at some point. And, well, I got, you know, turned on to his uh, agent then. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, just just talking about, like, getting in touch with people that you grew up watching or reading or something. Yeah. Like, man, I grew up on Goosebumps books, watching, like, you know, Are You Afraid to Dark and Goosebumps, Tales from the Crypt. I mean, yeah. John Casser, I mean, you, you know, I can message John and say hi any second. It's it's Which insane. Not- He's someone yeah. to get on my show. And I actually have a funny thing with John with him, John Casser. So when we were kids, my brother called me one day. I don't I don't know what the hell we were talking about on the phone or whatever. I don't know how the conversation came up where we started talking about Tales from the Crypt. And he told me when we were kids that that laugh scared him. At the time, as kids, I could do that laugh. So what did I do? I did it. He called me an asshole, probably hung up and called me back. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Anyway, we met him at a, <laughs> a couple years back. And I told him. <clears throat> so once I told him that story, from that point on, when my brother got his, was getting his autograph, kind of talking to him, he just talked in the Crypt Keeper voice, and he just laughed in that voice the whole fucking time. Like, that's another thing I love about the horror community, and that's one thing I miss about cons is... yeah celebrities they're so freaking down to earth and friendly yeah and, holy shit because you don't think like i've never i mean first of all i didn't know about a con until like 2011 between 2011 and 2013 i don't remember mm-hmm. i know about horror cons i know about comic cons and that stuff and like the video game type stuff yeah you would never think i'm like holy shit these people are so freaking friendly and just down to earth and it's not like a fake nice either because you know I've, I've met some of the people that are just like that fake nice and it's like eh, I, I, yeah for you on your i'm good it's a yeah. it's pretentious it's, but it's almost like yeah well i'm kind of paid to be nice to you right now kind of deal you can really sense that man yeah. sometimes when but people are a great example of a nice person was uh ken sagos i met him two years ago now right yeah yeah two years ago and i was at scarecon my brother this my brother had moved out to colorado earlier that year and so, you know, he sent money. So I got him his autograph. We got it signed, like one of the scripts signed for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I was talking to her. No, my, my wife was talking to him because me and him were talking back and forth. And my wife was talking to him. She's like, hey, she's like, my brother in law. She's like, he couldn't make, he moved out to Colorado earlier this year. So he, he couldn't be here. Is there any way you'd be able to call him on his break? He was like, yeah, of course. So I don't know if, I think I just asked my brother, like, yo, I was like, yo, what, or no, what it was was he was like, yo, call me, I'll call you on my break. Or no, call me at such and such a. <laughs> You know what's going on? Text me. I'll let you know if I'm on break. So I did that. Yeah. And I called him and just gave Ken just gave Ken the phone. He talked to him for a good 10, 15 minutes. That's fucking crazy. And yeah. He gave me the phone back. He was like, "Thank you so much." I was like, "Honestly, I was like, I can't take credit for this as much as I want to." And you know how much we mean we love stealing credit for things that our wives did, but <laughs> this is all right. <laughs> but, that's uh, fucking awesome, though, man. That's not even the icing on the cake, though. So I'm talking to him and I'm like, "Hey." I was like, uh, I would, I was like, I'd be honored to have you on my podcast one day. And he was like, what is a podcast? And I told him about it. And he was like, do you have your stuff here now? I was like, yeah. I 
was like, I'm set up over there. And I was pointing the direction I was set up at. He was like, give me about 15, 20 minutes and come back over here and remind me. And I'll come over there and record with you. I was like, all right. And I gave him about 20 minutes. I went back over there, talked to him. like, hey, Aaron, let's go. Let's go. I sat down with me for about a good half hour, just talking back and forth, having a good time. And that meant the world to me right there because he took about a half hour out of his time where he could have been signing autographs and making money to just shoot the shit with me, which just meant. Yeah. And then right. this makes it even better. This makes it kind of funny, which I have to go back to that episode. But there was a point where some some girl was walking by. I believe she worked at the casino. I think she worked like downstairs. I'm not with her or not. But she, he was asking, he was asking me, and he was asking her, like, you know, where can I, it was just a random person, like, where can I get good food from around here? And I was telling about this chicken spot that's downstairs, and she said, she was talking about how the chicken was nasty, this, that, and third, and she was, she was a damn liar. I'll tell you that right now. So, <laughs> you know, we, we were at this table, and we're talking, or whatever. And I think this was the second night. I don't remember if it was the first or second night there, but I know the second night there, I bought him fried chicken because I was like, "Look, I was like, I know you." He couldn't leave his table. He's like, he was talking about how he was hungry. And so I was like, "I'll be right." Back. I was like, "I'll get you some food." I was like, "I'm getting ready to go downstairs and I have dinner with my wife." I was like, "I'll bring him back some fried chicken." I brought him back some fried chicken. The next day, oh my god, he was so happy. He was, Aaron, that chicken was so good, man. And he's, you know how his voice sounds. He still, yeah, yeah. But the, another cool thing about that was like, anytime I walk past, his, anytime I walk past his table from that Friday to that Sunday, hey, Aaron, come over here, come hang out with me for a little bit. You and your wife, come hang out. And like me and he'll be back going back and forth, joking around, having people cracking up as he's signing autographs and stuff. And it was just, I love those moments with those, with those type of, those type of people there. I have many moments like that. And I'm sure you, I know you guys do as well. And it's just like, who would have thought? Because it's not just about them coming there, signing our autographs, taking our money and, you know, snapping a picture with us. It's about that. Experience they give us. Felissa Rose is another amazing one where you can talk to her for freaking hours. Mm. And I, I just love that that aspect of the cons and not just the celebrities, but the fans there. Like the fans, we could be in line together. Yeah. And that's the only time where I'm patient in lines, like anywhere else. I'm just like, oh, fuck. You know what? Like I, I've been grocery yeah. be by myself. I've been to Walmart or wherever else grocery shopping or getting stuff. And I'll look at the car. Like, Do I really need this? Sh-? Fuck it. <laughs> just leave. <laughs> <laughs> because just to avoid the line, man. Yeah. yeah. The funny thing is there could be like three people in front of me. But they have a lot of stuff in their carts. I'm like, you can't wait. I'm thinking about the back of my head that like, you can't wait for three people there. Like, no, fuck this. I, I, I'll come back tomorrow or something. The only time yeah. I'm home with my wife, because she's like, you need to just be patient. It's like, oh my God. But at a con, it's completely different because you want to be there. Nobody wants to yeah. be there. You go there because you have to go there to get something. That's to eat. right. Absolutely. I'll take it to my grave, man, saying that the horror genre, out of all of entertainment, any category, any subcategory or whatever, the horror genre family or none are the nicest tight knit group of people that you'll ever come across. I agree. Mm-hmm. He's down. I mean, yeah, you yeah. know, in there, that's with everything, but I've the atmosphere, like when you walk into a horror convention versus any other type of convention I've been to just walking in there, you just have that feeling like everybody wants to be here versus like a comic con. Yeah. It's, Okay, I'm here because my girlfriend or you know the boyfriend or the husband, wife or the kids. You're here for somebody else. You're not necessarily there because you want to be there. Or, or they're there for one specific thing only. I'm only here for this, and then I, as soon as I see that, I'm going to bounce. You know? Yeah. yeah. Well, for a convention, it's like I'm here for some people. Are, I'm just here for the vendor. Some people, I'm here for the celebrity. Some people, I'm here for every. Like I go for everything. Everything. Yeah. Another thing, what I do now because I'm like a child, I'm irresponsible when it comes to these horror cons. You know, like a kid. <laughs> I give my wife my money, and I'm like, "Look, you know, autograph. <clears throat> Let me spend the money for the autographs, and then if there's something really cool that I want, you know, make sure that I, I get this because there's been times I'll, I'll blow my money in like a day. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, help. I'm just like, yeah. So and, much cool shit, though, man. Yeah, and I'm just like here, like every single time. As soon as we get in those kind doors, I'm like, are you sure? I'm like, I'll keep like twenty dollars on me, but the rest you need to hold because you know how I am when I get here. <laughs> And you know, if you're going to budget for a horror con or a con in any any genre, if you're budgeting a certain amount, double it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Really and then right. some, if possible, because man, money at events is so easy to spend. Easy yep. word. It's it's, and you don't even think about it. like there's there's times where I'll be able to, uh, stories in general. Like I want this, but do I really want it that bad? But at a con, like. I got to get this. <laughs> yeah, right. I need this now. 
I think what yeah, it's, sure. I mean, obviously, besides the fact that it's horror, is, I mean, when you get like certain figures, like I, I collect figures, I collect movies and everything, there's certain ones where you get and you're just like, I just seen this on eBay for like $400 and they're selling it for a hundred or yeah, something. Yeah. Out of the box. I don't care if it's out of the box. I'm getting this thing. Like I have a blade figure. I don't know where it is right now. Hopefully it's not running around, but uh, I, <laughs> I think the guy was selling it for like 90 and I was talking to him. I got it for like 75. I'm like, fuck yeah. <laughs> like, nice. I, that's one thing I, I would have seen in my, the back of my head. Though, I'm like, if he won't go down from nine, I want this figure. So I will pay 90. But why not try to get it a little bit cheaper so I can get by by other things? Which I mean, a lot of times yeah. bring a lot of stuff. They don't want to bring that shit back home. They do not want to bring it back home. And yeah, no, right. I do that every single kind. I do that because I'm just why not? At least try. The worst they could say is no. And yeah. I'm the type of tour. I learned this from my father. I did this actually. I did this at a mall recently, well, like two years ago. This has nothing to do with horror. I was a uh, um for my younger brother. He's a Minnesota Vikings fan, and yeah. they. Had, cool pictures of the helmet and i don't know what the guy was selling it for i was like i can give you this for it he was like no i can't do that you have to give me that so i just walked away he was like hey sir come come back he's like i can do that <laughs> yeah i find a lot of artists too like with the convention circuit mm-hmm. um they'll do like event exclusive prints mm-hmm. so if you are collecting like their artwork but you want that one you have to be at the event or know someone going to the event to get you a copy of it because it'll be discontinued after. Yes. I know, uh, uh, Brian Clegg, I mean, Clegg <laughs> done, uh, there were two in particular that I wanted. One of them in, in last year, I think it was, or the year before was a Sid Hag print that he done. And he put it in the vault and kind of retired it after the event. And you think I can torment the fuck out of Clegg enough for him to, to pull one out for me? Mm, no, nope. not yet. Not yet. It will oh, happen because yeah. I'm relentless. Yeah, it's gonna. It has. Yeah. It better happen. <laughs> well, Clegg, Clegg, if you're watching this, man, I'm giving uh, the master of villains a shout out and uh, go check him out on Facebook, folks. Because Clegg's work is yeah, he's a uh, fantastic, awesome. fantastic yeah. artist. So now, now after doing a little plug for you, Cleggy, I, I I need a print. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> pulling strings right right i fucking love that guy we had we had clegg and uh and lance wagner on wagner. uh for uh an episode of ramblings of a madman oh, lance, the wagner wiles lance is a nice guy i had him on a long time maybe like a year ago so you had you had you had uh wagner on when he first started basically yeah yep nice because he was he was a fan of of my show my first show that i did and then he messaged me, me and we become friends. And he's like, so like, man, like, I'd love to try that stuff. And I'm like, man, there is, it's like Yoda. It's either do or do not. There is no try. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. And anyway, he got talking to a few people and got on board with uh, Sacrificial Terror Productions. Uh, yeah. With zo- yeah, with Zombie Barbie and Sam I am Mason at the time. Yeah. And uh, Zombie's still doing her thing. And then uh, he left and went with uh, his wife to uh, the Romero Pictures Heavy Metal Indie Brigade. And now they're doing the Wagner Walls with uh, Joe and George over there. They're doing wonderful things. I'm, I'm, yeah. fucking, I'm sick and tired of telling the guy I'm proud of him. Yeah, There's right. a lot of people, they're like, oh, man, man, I'd love to do this shit. I, I want to get into it. Okay, well, if you really do want to, start it. And here's here's the quick thing, people. I'll, here's some advice. Anybody that wants to start a podcast, you have one of these, right? Yep. Yeah. Download. You go to the Anchor. Download Anchor. You can record right on Anchor. You can do it right on your phone. And to, I mean, if you don't have a computer, that's fine. If you don't have the equipment, whatever. Or if you do have a computer, buy yourself a USB mic. Buy yourself a pair of headphones. Buy yourself yep. a gaming mic. Plug it right in. You, you know, use one of these platforms. Hit record and just have a good time. Don't You'll eventually get, but it's one of those things you'll eventually get better at as you do it with anything else. Yeah. That's right. I mean, at the end of the day, you have to do it for yourself. You have to do it for your entertainment. You have to do it because you want to do it. Don't do it because other people are doing it. And don't do it because you think you're going to get a billion views or whatever the case may be. Just no. You do it because you have a passion. You do it for the love of it or stay out of it. Exactly. And that yeah. means across the board for podcasts. Not for podcasts, just podcasting across the board. Yep. Yeah. A panel 
for a podcasting panel at this horror con, right? And I remember somebody asking, they were like, um, so do you guys make money off of this? And we all just laughed. I was like, no. I said, uh, my answer was, I was like, no. I was like, it's not impossible. But I said, if you get into this to make money, you're going to make maybe five, ten episodes, and you're going to quit because you're not going to see the result that you want. And you're not going to have passion. Yeah. I said, if you're getting into this because you're a fan of podcasting or you're a fan of whatever you want to discuss, horror or not, and you have a strong passion for it, you can possibly do things with I'm not saying that you're not guaranteed to make money. You're not guaranteed, but you'll at least get a following. You'll at least have a great time doing it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the, and the people you exactly. make as friends along the way. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Like I mentioned. Oh, that's it. And the passion will seep through, man. And if you keep at it, like the longer you're at it, the, the more of a following you'll get. And the more of a following you'll get, the more hits and views and likes and subscribes you'll get, oh, which. Yeah. Could potentially make you some money. Maybe. You know I mean? at, at the end of the day, though, like, I've made, I got one ad thing on here. And I'll tell you guys mm-hmm. off, off camera, so you guys, if you guys are interested in it. Mm-hmm. I just don't, the, re- and the reason why I said that is because the ad thing is a website thing. And, like, I, use, I actually use <laughs> sponsor. Basically, what they, I can tell you what they do, but I won't tell you their name yet. As mm-hmm. they'll find, um, not they'll find, you, uh, sign up for it if you're a podcaster or if you own a business and what it is is people looking for ad space for pod you know and podcasters looking for ads and you submit the ad to them like you pick one you submit the ad if they accept it boom you let them know what data drop and you get paid for it. i got successful one time i gotta try more than i so i just stopped yeah, yeah. other stuff but <laughs> and i was the funny thing is i was successful with the actual website that's why i'm not mentioning them because they're not paying me for this so <laughs> <laughs> yeah there you go but no, that makes sense. I mean, if you have, it's, if it's something like this, again, with podcasting, if you have a passion for it, whatever type of stuff you want to talk about on a podcast, do it. All you need is, literally, all you need is your cell phone, which if you're watching this show, you're listening to this show, you have at least a cell phone or a, co- a computer, and boom, go ahead and do it. Don't care what it. about it. Just As long as you're proud of your show at the end of the day, and you're having fun in your show, that's all that matters. The rest will come, and people can tell your energy from your show. Like, every someone... That's right. And just to kind of do it because everybody else is doing it. You'll get like one or two people to watch it, maybe 10, 20. And then after that, they're like, oh, this person, they're not really into it. And then you got the people like us who are just fucking love doing this shit. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, if this could be my nine to five, this would be my fucking nine oh, to five. That'd be, that'd oh, be all right. dude. All day that's, all day. that's the dream right there, right? To be able to do what we're doing yeah. for the love of it, but actually be able to make a living doing it. Come on. Yeah, it'd be fun. It yeah, be fun, that's for sure. You have to speak things into existence because one day it can happen. Yeah. I, I also look at it like there's a lot of celebrities that have podcasts out, and the only reason why people listen to them, and I'm one of those included for some of them, or the only reason why they have a following is because we already know who they are. Like a lot yep. of a lot of people don't know who we are, but not to that level to where like people worldwide, millions and millions of people worldwide know who you are. And you have at yeah. least a thousand fans. <clears throat> Mm. So once we, you give us that platform and that same opportunity, I think we can make better shows than them. I really do, and that's mm. quite, quite possible. possible. I only say that because, yeah. like, I'll just stick with like with us talking about horror because we're real fans of this stuff, and we're not getting paid to do it. You guys have these that's platforms; right. you're making money doing this. Would you be doing podcast celebrities if you weren't getting paid for it? And I don't mean the ones that really have a passion for. It. I mean like the the millionaires that are just like, oh, I want to start a podcast now. Come yeah. On. Not mad at it because I do. I do like listening to some of the conversations. There is some conversations I do like listening to because, like, I wonder what so and so would think about certain things or whatever. But mm-hmm. I think we're better than them at, the, at it. And hey, you might be better than me at throwing a football or catching a football or rapping or whatever you do for your main thing. But mm-hmm. I'm better at this, and you guys are right. good. And that's something. Fuck, thank you. I'm I'm still green. I just I don't know. <laughs> I just I I, think- I just. I just open my mouth and say shit to people. Man, it's like Eddie Van Halen. It's, it's like Eddie Van Halen would say, and God rest his soul, I mean, you know, yeah. the legend himself is gone, right? But yeah. you, as much as you know on guitar, you should constantly learn them. Yeah. yeah. Angus Young I'm said the learn. same thing 30 years ago. He's like, you know, you never learn. You never learn at all. You'll never know it all. I'm constantly learning. And I'm not just talking about guitar. I mean, you pertain that to anything. If you automatically think you know it all, you're full of shit. Mm-hmm. 
you it's a learning curve every day, man. No matter mm -hmm. how many times you do something, you get better at it every time you do it. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And like, whether that's whether I'm that's still, running a show or doing a film or could be running an event, you know. Yeah. Like I'm still green with with any with podcasting and everything. I'm still very green. But I'm just I don't know. I'm just naturally I'm comfortable with just talking to people. Me too. So I guess yeah. So yeah, I guess it just kind of works. I think that's I think that's a <laughs> I mean, depending on how your show is, if you're if you have a show where it's just you and your host, you don't necessarily have to be a people person. But for like what we do, how we have other people on our shows, you kind of have to be a people person, or else it's yeah, not for sure. You know, it doesn't like people at all, but expect to have people come on your show. <laughs> and you're not a people person at all. You're like this fucking guy, <laughs> right? I'd rather have guests that I knew could take a joke. And hold their own on on that end of things because I think the second that I got to sit down and literally watch all my P's and Q's, cross my T's, dot my I's, mm -hmm. I'm in trouble. That's when I will swear more by accident. Yeah, fucking yeah, always. I'm like, see, I'm and, in, I'm in the middle. Like, I I feed off my guests depending on how they are, which I'm sure you guys do too. But mm -hmm. I, of episodes like this one right here where we could talk about whatever and how we could say whatever the fuck we want and nobody's gonna be offended like oh my god he really just said that it, it, yeah. it does take like a weight off because there there is guests which i'm no disrespect to the guests but it's just not necessarily that you want to talk crazy but it's just like i hope i don't slip up and offend them so to speak I yeah. Said, yeah i mean my my first episode i let my brother name it it's zombie boners <laughs> 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 I don't. I think it's from the show, I, which I still have yet to watch it. Mind you, I'm going on three years running this show. Yeah. And he keeps telling, he, well, he keep telling me, but he told me he wanted to do a review on. I think it was Z Nation, and I guess it was zombies fucking in there or something. I don't remember what, but that's yeah. that's like the first. So right there from the very first episode, you know what you're getting from this show. <laughs> Z boners. Yeah. And it just goes from that's there. Awesome. Um, that's amazing. <laughs> but I, I, I wouldn't change it for the world. Though. It's it's so fun. It's one of those things where it's just like you just wake up and you're like, people actually want to talk to me about horror movies or just horror podcast or whatever, and just yeah. be fine with it from all across the world too. Which is that's another thing that's nuts. I never thought I'd talk to anybody outside of honestly, I'll say outside of New York because I never thought I'd have anybody that I didn't know on here. Mm, yeah, people on from the UK, Australia, now New <laughs> Newfoundland. Yeah, yep. Newfoundland, Canada. Canada. Also, your your shirt. Did you? Uh, this is going to be a weird question. Did you get that in a horror block? Yes, that is not a weird question at all. And I love that you asked that question because I had another con out here was in New York, Pennsylvania. <laughs> yeah. Um, the one with the house from uh, Bates Motel, I believe. Yeah, I got that one too. And I was, I was at a con, and this guy walked up. We just walked past each other, like horror block, horror block. Like I'm, nice. Nice. And my wife, yes. Yes. I. They started out. I missed that. They started out so good. Me too. Awesome shirts, and then towards the end, before shit hit the fan, they started giving you some cheesy ass shirts, and I'm just like, what yeah. the fuck? Why? I don't. Yeah, everything. It was so so cool. So, and you can only get them through Horror Block. That's what I loved about it. Yeah, they were great. They were very original shirts. And, like, you'd get everything, man. So much collectible stuff. And you'd always get a pretty bitchin' movie in there, too, for well, the most part. Yeah. And, I mean, it was, what was it, like, 30 bucks, 25, 30 bucks for about four or five random items and a shirt. Like, my thing was, my whole thing, why I did it was for the shirts. Like, that's how I got my horror shirt collection up some. I was yep. Like, hey, Same. You go online to buy a horror shirt, and they're, like, 20, 30 bucks by themselves. I'm like, why not fucking get mm -hmm. a random shit with it? At the very least, yep. you can give it away. But... You know, yeah. For for Christmas one year, I was given a year subscription. So every month for an entire year, I had the box show up, and man, it was great. <laughs> Someone was waiting on mail day to get my horror block to see what kind of cool shirt and new yeah. swag I'd get. Right, like, wicked. Christmas with this shit, man. I'm like, oh my god, it's here. Yes, like what the? Why are yeah, you relax. I, I got to jump on that, man. I have yet to actually sign up for any of them. Oh um, mm. you well horror block proper is uh, they're gone now, but I think you can get um like Fright Crate. Yeah, Fright Crate or something. 
really good. I've I've gotten that a few times actually. Um, I, there's some u- videos on my YouTube channel with that. I've gotten that a few times. There was coffin box. I don't know if that's still around or not. I don't mm-hmm. remember. And I used to do. Um, you ever guys? You guys ever try? Or I know CW said you never tried it, but did you ever try? Uh, what's the one with the DVD? It's you can either get DVDs or Blu-rays. Horror pack. Yeah. No. Yep. No, I haven't tried it. They send you four. Do you do you either choose DVD or Blu-ray? They send you either four DVDs or four Blu-rays a month. Oh, cool! Thirty bucks. Yeah. Wow, that's actually pretty good. Yeah, and it. I mean, you'll get some Jeff, and then you'll get some shit. Like, oh shit! <laughs> what the hell? Am I <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Sell it on eBay. <laughs> yeah. So just sign it. Sign the outside with a sharpie. And just say signed. You don't have to say who signed it. You say signed copy of this movie. <laughs> Ten bucks. <laughs> on every single movie. You have nothing to do with this movie. Well, I bought horror. Yeah, I, I never said it. Is. I just said I signed it. I said it's a signed copy of this movie for Ten bucks. I didn't say it had anything to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> Horrible. No, nah, I wouldn't do that. I, I'll, tell you Terrible. What I, I'll tell you what I would do is if I was ever in, and I don't care if I'm in a horror movie for two seconds. If I have multiple copies of that DVD and I'm either selling them or giving them away, I'm signing every single copy. Brother, you yep, know, for sure. I was in it. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah, I do that too, man. Like, what the funny thing oh, is, like, I remember going to um, <clears throat> one of time getting a horror movie and it was an indie film. And I'm like, hey, can you sign this? And they're like, are you sure? I was like, you had something to do with it, right? Like, yeah. I was like, of course, hell yeah, I want you to sign this. That's like, I, shit, again, me, the type of person I am, I'm signing, if, if I have something to do with it, as far as being in it, helping direct it, record, whatever. I'm signing it. They go, what were you in the mm-hmm. Oh, that black guy that walked across the screen? That was me. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even supposed to be in there, but they just kept it in because it made sense, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I man, and, that, and that's when you go, around, man, I shared screen time with Sylvester Stallone. Back the fuck up. <laughs> I, was, I was that guy in the back walking by. Yeah, drinking something. <laughs> I would. I had to be all about it. <laughs> I shared screen time. With the Sly Stallone, <laughs> uh, Nick Cage. I shared screen time Nick with Cage. Nicolas Cage. <laughs> oh god, no! I don't want to. Be- <laughs> yeah, you're like, no. You know what? <laughs> I'll pass on this movie. <laughs> Sturdy's never going to have you back on again. <laughs> I'm only really kidding. <laughs> oh fuck, man. Yeah, so uh, sir, there's a there's extras for Nick Cage move by. <laughs> <laughs> nope, I don't mind Nick Cage. <sighs> uh, Nick <laughs> Nick is all right in his own world. He's their own. Like, if you guys are familiar with Family Guy, Peter, yes. <coughs> yep, Cage, Peter and the chicken just out of nowhere, we just see each other and just start fighting out of nowhere. And I don't yep. want to happen, so I'm going to be responsible and just you know stay away from wherever he is. And hopefully, he <laughs> so it's not like a it's not like a Peter versus Chicken thing. That's that awesome. Funny though, like if just, imagine that being on TMZ. <laughs> yeah. just, Shit, man! I, I bet your ratings would go up. Yeah. <laughs> Thirty gets into an altercation with Nicolas Cage. Why? We, yep. we don't know. Who started the fight? They just started fight. Like right when they seemed to, they just they started ran. fighting. <laughs> That's amazing. I had the craving last night, man. To watch. Can you remember Celebrity Deathmatch? Yes. Yeah. The, clay- the claymation fights. Yeah, yeah. Oh shit, man! I had to YouTube some of them last night. I, I, I don't know why. The Marilyn Manson stuff cracks me up. Horror version of that. That would be awesome. We need a horror version of that, and we also need a horror fan or podcaster version of that. Where yes. Have random. Hmm. Us Celebrity death match or podcast death match as claymations just fighting each other just for the hell of it for fun. We do our own voices. I think that'd be a fun fucking idea. Episode one would have to be Wagner and Clegg. Yes. That would be so that would be great on so many levels. Fun, fun. The only thing is though, I can't I would not yeah, I wouldn't even know where to Well, I'd know where to begin. I just wouldn't be able to make clay figures oh, me. and animate them that well. You know no, what no, I mean? no. Oh, so you need. Fun. I mean, you could do it all. You could literally do everything you needed in Blender. Blender is yeah. like an open source program. If you knew how to run it right, I mean, you could do it a digital animation to make it look clay. 
never heard of that. But that and I think something like that would be fun and funny. And you gotta make sure you wouldn't get in trouble by the creators of Celebrity Deathmatch. But yeah, right. well, I, yeah, I guess you'd have to get permission or find a way to make it a little bit different. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, it would be yeah, yeah. It's an idea. That's awesome. for sure. You take that idea off the ground. Help us out with that idea, and just, I just need to be in it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Sir Sturdy and Claymation. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. If K doesn't have a horror podcast, uh, you could just throw me up against anybody, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you guys That'd be awesome. That's fine too. If if they if anyone ever done an episode where it was like a, a three way battle to the death with, with me, you, and Sean, I mean, I'd be the guy that got into the ring with the peace offering and sat down with this big giant bong. <laughs> <laughs> That, that, I'd be I'd be trying to psych everyone out. I'd just be covered in like blood, and I'd get naked. And then people, <laughs> and then people would be like, "Dude, there's like a naked dude with blood on him. That's fucking gross." Uh, and I'd be like, "Yes, it's working. They're leaving." You'd be the <laughs> asshole that would use tiptoe through the tulips as your entrance theme, wouldn't you? I would actually. Um, what would I use? Hmm, that's a good question. I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just gonna tell you guys. Probably um, uh, tomorrow, like the theme from Annie. Ah. <laughs> tomorrow, and I'd yeah. like frolic to the ring, but then I'd just like I'd be punching myself in the face the entire way down. That'd be weird, man. Yeah, I'd be like, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> like that, that motherfucker's crazy. <laughs> I'm coming down high as hell on a horse. Old Town Road. <laughs> yes. But you gotta sit on the horse backwards. <laughs> so, you're like, right. <laughs> so you're like you're facing towards like, you know, the opposite end. Yeah, to, like baked. Work. That'd be awesome. I got plan on <laughs> up here, so I guess I gotta fight. <laughs> <laughs> and it would take twenty five oh, minutes to get to the ring on the horse. Yep. Yeah, oh that'd be wicked. <laughs> that that would be awesome. <laughs> Show where people would probably have to hide to really be to really want to watch that, but yeah, a lot of potheads. I would love that. I really feel like that would be an entertaining show, though. I really, really do. Yeah, that's one thing that's not on to go out there much, man. Is like I know I might know for what one, two, three different like pothead podcasts. Mm -hmm. mm, one know. guy here in Newfoundland does one actually. I'll have to. Uh, I'll have to get his. Uh, his link and drop it to you guys. I can't even remember his name right now. That's terrible. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, there's, if there's technology and there's a, a interest, a group of interest, mm -hmm. I mean, you're going to be able to find someone to watch it. Oh, fuck yeah. Mm -hmm. and I, I, I do feel yeah. like a, a death match type thing, just something like that, or even like a, just something. I've, I've, I'm always brewing ideas in my mind. I forget them a lot too, though. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad this is recorded, <laughs> right? <laughs> but no, like I feel, I do feel like something like that people would be entertained by, especially if it's like you know, with our following, seeing like say if our if my show went up against your show, like say me and one of my co-hosts went up against you two, mm. and then you got Joe, you got Lance's show, and you got a bunch of other horror podcasts that heard of each other and know of each other one way or another. It's where at the very least, I, we will watch it, and our following will watch. It. <laughs> And from our, right. you know, that'll branch it out to others to where we get yeah. the indie scene on here. Just imagine people from the indie scene in this. That would be fun as hell. I really it would be. Hell. And it'd be hilarious. Like nobody win, lose, or draw. I wouldn't give a shit. <laughs> get high <by> <laughs> <laughs> That's something we should we should brainstorm more on, man, and find out if there's a feasible way to go about doing it. I really mm. I agree. I really do. Like I'm I'm serious about that too, because I, I think it'd be fun. It'd be fun, it'd be funny. It'd be a way to get eyes on, and I'm sharing this with everybody. It'd be a way to get eyes on everyone, everyone's show as well. That's right. And I mean, and that, and that's another thing, like you had mentioned earlier, that I love about this community. It's not like a, you know, it's kind of everyone's helping everyone yeah. else like you, out. You mind me, you mind for me, type of that's deal. Right. That's how it should. Yeah. Be. I mean, this, yeah, is, Fuck yeah, it was like this world would be a whole lot better. <laughs> oh, <laughs> dude, if everyone could just fucking get along. Like, yeah, like we can disagree. We can disagree and still be friends. Oh hell yeah, 
Hell yeah. But people just got to grow the fuck up and be able to be an adult. Yeah, that's it, man. Right? They don't know how to. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I think it's not that they don't know how. It's just some people literally wake up in the morning and they argue with their self in the mirror before they even get a start on their day because just just the type of people they are. They need to argue. Yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right. Sure. I'd lose my goddamn mind if I was like that, personally. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. as long as you don't try to lie to me and say Nicholas Cage is a good actor, you know. Yeah. <laughs> 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 And out of pure spite, I'm going to have to go and watch a fucking Nick Cage film now, right? Oh, ouch. I'm probably going to, next one I watch, especially how we were on the topic of, like, comedic or earlier, I think we're going to go with Evil Dead 2. Old Faithful, Evil Dead 2. Because we brought up horror comedy and Bruce Campbell. So, Evil Dead 2. And see, yeah. you watching Nicolas Cage, that's only punished, that has nothing... That's not gonna hurt me. That's gonna hurt you more. It's gonna hurt me. You know, like when you brother, <laughs> brother, listen. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do like a Facebook, um, live event, and I'm gonna like you know. I'm gonna stream probably Ghost Rider or some shit. And oh, I'm, dude, I'm, I'm, and I'm weird. gonna I'm gonna tag you in it <laughs> multiple times and share it to every group with you tag to it until you cave and actually watch it. Oh, that's a good way to never end up on this show ever again. <laughs> For one. For one. <laughs> no, no, Sturdy knows I fucking love him. Oh, man, I guess we can scrap that idea we were talking about a few minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And, uh, oh, sh shit. Unfortunately, I have to run. What time? Um, well, holy crap! It's nine o'clock here. Wow. Nine p.m. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Dirty here. I had a great time with you guys. We we're definitely gonna fucking do this shit again. More. Oh, we definitely got definitely. to. Yeah, yeah, man. Just uh, shoot us a message. As a matter of fact, um, let's get chatting about all this other shit that we're brainstorming here. Hell yeah! Hell yeah. As well. <laughs> yeah. And definitely be in touch for sure. Oh, definitely. And if there's anything you guys want to plug, plug your show, plug your pages. Feel free to go ahead right now and then just send me the links in the group chat. And when this episode comes out, I'm not 100% sure when it'll come out because I have a bunch in front of me. Yeah. <coughs> I'll post the links when the episode comes out on YouTube and on my audio platform. Man, Sean, like, you want to you really do a spiel? It. or? Uh, yeah, well, we have Ramblings of a Madman. It's uh, usually every Thursday. Sometimes we, if it's not every Thursday, we'll let you know. Mm -hmm. And the show's called Here I Am Rambling. Like a madman. Our show is called Ramblings of a Madman, and it's every Thursday at uh, seven thirty p.m. Newfoundland Canada time, which would be uh, six p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Got it. Yes. Yes. I I'm getting more used to the time zone changes because I got a lot of friends down in L.A. and uh, Texas, down around that way, and Alabama. And you got coffee. And, and we do. We and me and Mr. Dan Yager, who played Leatherface in uh, Texas Chainsaw 3D, uh, head on over to uh, www.killerschoice.com. We have three beautiful blends of coffee, and uh, you know, one there for whatever your needs are. And it's like jet fuel; it'll get you through the night. <laughs> so uh, it's good, strong coffee. It's good, honest coffee for people that actually like coffee. This ain't Starbucks. Bullshit. No. This is not frappuccino, mochaccino, latte. No, fuck, man. It's coffee. Send me, this is. Please send, send me all your links. But definitely send me, send me all your links. And then that coffee link, I'm going to show my. I don't drink coffee because I don't okay. like shit. But she loves coffee. So mm -hmm. I'll definitely let her know about it. Well, Sean Smithson with uh, Smithson Woods and Creations, uh, he does the laser etchings. Yeah, uh, Sean wasn't a huge coffee drinker, and he tried our coffee, and now he's one of our best clients. Nice. Like Sean is a devout Killer's Choice supporter, and That's awesome. you know when you can turn someone that don't drink a whole lot of coffee into an actual coffee drinker, yeah. it's got to be good. I don't. I'm not saying I wouldn't take a light, light sip of hers, a light, light sip, but I don't. I just don't drink it at all. 
Mm-hmm. But hey, you never know. Yeah, oh, man, this, to, this, this stuff would be like rocket fuel to you. <laughs> but thank you guys again so much for coming on. I had an amazing time. Everybody go check them out everywhere. The links will be posted below. Go get some fucking coffee. And <laughs> just wait to see what we guys what we have in store next. We don't even know yet, but it's going to be yeah. very, very entertaining working with these guys and working with Joe as well, because I'm sure we'll all work together with something. Oh, for sure. And uh, we should, thank you we so should much get on. for having us on, man. It Any, was it was fucking great. Any fucking time that we're all free, I'm down to record with you guys. I'm I mean that too. I don't mean that like when people say, "Yeah, you can come over anytime," and they're lying. They're just saying that to be. Not, I'm I'm being serious. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, and that's awesome, man. No, I'm definitely I'll definitely hold you to it because I had a lot of fun. I I'm yeah. I'd love to come back here, even if it's just again just <laughs> sit down and speak about horror movies for an hour, man. Well, I mean, this this was literally off the cuff. We never picked any topics to really discuss or talk about. We just winged everything that we ran with here tonight. Yeah, we that need is- we need to actually sit down and work on a project that we can pull off. Whether it be the Evil Bong movie marathon, get baked idea, or the podcast celebrity debt match idea. I mean, you know. We'll it would be fun as fuck. We got to figure out a way to do this kind of stuff. Yeah, we will figure it out. I agree. And we can get a brain trust together. I always try to surround myself with people that are more intelligent than me and more tech savvy than I am. So yeah, <laughs> we're definitely, we're definitely going to talk about that. We're definitely going to talk about that. Nice. If people don't steal our fucking idea because we came up with it first. You can be a part of it though. Yeah. This, yeah. This, I mean, you know, this video, is the proof. this video is the proof that we came up with a verse. Yep. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll let you guys go. Enjoy the rest of your night. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for coming. You too. This again. Thank you for having us, man. Anytime. It was killer. Anytime. It was awesome. <laughs> All right, brother. Right on. Anyway, and yeah, I forgot to also mention too, uh, just before we go, you're in New York, eh? Sir. Sure. All right. So, I mean, when this pandemic bullshit is all over, I've got to get on a plane and go to uh, Odessa to do a few things with Dan. Maybe I can hook up and uh, meet you in uh, New York somewhere. Possible. That's that's possible. Just, cool. Again, when this all this crazy bullshit is done, that'd be awesome. That'd be real. Yeah, yeah. Like not not getting too public with it, you know, out in the open. But what area of New York are you in? I'm in Al- well, Schenectady, but Albany, New York. So the capital, about four hours from from uh, New York City. Mm, okay, so roughly from where to the Odessa would be how far? I'm not even sure where Odessa, New York is, to be honest with you. Oh, okay. <laughs> figure that out. We can figure. I can talk to you about that behind the scenes, though. Easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll figure that shit out, man. And get all that straightened out for when all this is when the world returns to somewhat normal again. We'll say it that way. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I think this whole pandemic is Nicholas Cage's fault because he's been making all these fucking movies these past. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Friday. Oh. Don't have me to fucking get Nick Cage to do a cameo video for you. Oh, don't do that, man. That's yeah, horrible. I'm going back to him. <laughs> <My own. laughs> Brian, <laughs> Brian Clegg got Ricky Bertskovic, or I think that's how you say his last name, to do one for, um, for Lance. Oh, really? Yeah. You know that Ricky Berkowitz guy that does like the crazy videos and he's eating the cheese. He's pulling them in his face. And Oh, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Him. So, Clegg got a cameo video from him. <laughs> Lance. <laughs> oh, and Ricky was calling Lance a poopy head and a shithead and everything in, in the video. It was fucking hilarious. Nice. I'll have to yeah. check that out. That's funny. <laughs> So, you know, I might, uh, Sir Sturdy <laughs> might get a cameo video from uh, Nick Cage at some point. Yeah, this is going to be my video back to him. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Thanks for having us on. I yes, needed this thank laugh. Thank you so much. Oh, man. Have a good night, you guys. And we'll definitely be doing this soon. All for right, man. Sure. Cheers. Cheers. Peace, love, brother. Oh, man. That was fucking awesome.